So here I'm going to explain the drafting palette in TurboCAD. Here I'm using Professional Platinum. Uh, the drafting palette is not in Deluxe. So we have a drawing here consisting of three parts. The main blue part here was originally a, a rectangular box. I've put a fillet on either corner, top corner, and I've drawn a cylinder and subtracted it for this groove. And this is simply a, a box here that I've extended into the main part and made a subtraction. And then this is just a, a cylinder plonked on the front of that box. Now, before you even start putting a drawing together, to use the drafting palette, I would advise you go up to Options, ACES and turn on the create editing history, the part tree. This is not on by default. So you need to turn this on first by clicking that box. I'll explain why in a second, but do that first. What that means is that TurboCAD will remember the history of this object. And so if I go to tools, palettes, selection information and click on to select the, the main object here up here you can see that it remembers the history of it so it remembers it was originally a box then it had a fillet then it had a subtract and if you open this subtract you can see it subtracted a cylinder which i did say i was just now and then the second subtract was the box which was this one here so the first advantage to turning on that history is that you can track its editing history. It has a second advantage when you use the drafting palette, which will become clear in a second. So I've created this object and now I'm going to open the drafting palette, uh, which you'll find under tools, palettes and drafting here. Mine's open already over there. So I'm going to click on to, I'm going to select the whole drawing. And then in the drafting palette, this icon here, create part assembly. I click onto that. It says assembly. So it's calling this whole thing, the assembly. If I go to the top where it says rename, I'll click on to rename. I'll just call it all. Hit return. Now, what I can then do is if I can break this down to a number of different parts. For this exercise, I'll only break it down to two parts. So we'll say that this main part here and this red part are essential, but perhaps this uh, cylinder sticking out as an option. So I'll select that and up here I'll go create part assembly, click on, it's given it a name, I'll go rename, I call it option or extra. Okay. Now you can have as many of these as you want. Um, I'm only doing two for the uh, for this exercise. So I've created those. Now I'm going to go to my paper space, which I've already set up, and I want to. I'm going to turn my 3D picture into a orthographic projection so first of all i want to look at a front elevation which would be this one here so front so i click onto my all here and i click onto front there it is there's the front elevation there now i can drag that in or i can go up to the icon here it says insert into drawing if i click onto that it's coming in now we can see it's too big for my A4 sheet of paper. So I'm going to make it half size. So I will hit tab, access this box in the bottom left hand corner where it says scale. And now I'm going to type in 0.5. Okay, so now it's half size. And I'm going to put that up in the top here just by left clicking. There it is. If I then want to plan view, Click on the plan here. There's my plan view. This time I'll drag it in from here. I can just drag it in. Now, 
So I've left clicked, selected it, brought it in. I've kept my finger down on the button. If I come in underneath the, the front elevation and go up to it, you see it changes color and it's lined itself up. So there it is. So left click and it's there. If I want an end elevation, uh, I think, I'm not sure which one, I think it's probably that one. Yeah, it looks like it. This time I'll use insert into drawing again and I can take that in there, that looks right. And again, if I line it up and take it over, it will automatically line itself up nicely. Now, if I want a section, so I want to, uh, I'm just going to draw an arbitrary section on this end elevation. I'll draw a sectional line, go up to here, and it says, where does it say? Create by view line. So that's what I want to do. I want to create a section by the view line that I've just drawn. Select the tool, select the uh, view that you want to section, which is this end elevation. Select the section line, which is this. And then say which side you want to see. So I want to see this side. And I click that. Now nothing happens in the drawing, but it's created it over here. Aligned sectional view. So if I select that. And then I go insert into drawing. And again, if I bring it up it will automatically align itself. And there's our section. Now, also, we could bring in a 3D view. So I could go back to my model space. I could do uh, view, named views, named view. Oops, seems a little sad. Name view, so I will. Sorry, my mistake. And the line, I'm going to select the whole object. I do view, named views, create view. Sorry, I've done that wrong. View, named views, create view. Draw my box around it. I've done it the wrong way around. Draw my box around it. Give it a view. I'll call it 3D and say OK. And then when it gets to my paper space, I can bring it in on the paper space. So view, viewports, viewport. Here it is. 3D, go to. There it is. Now, it will come in as a wireframe, but I can select that box, right click, go to properties, quality rendering. Also, I think I'll get rid of the box around the view, uh, the box, the visible box here, it says. I'll turn that off. Okay. And that should come in now. Oh, no, it hasn't done. Okay. Right click. Should have done it the other way around. Quality. Sorry, I, I clicked on the name and not the box. That's the mistake I made there. So that's something to look out for. Okay. There we go. So we've got the orthographic projection. We've also got a 3D pictorial view. Now, if you remember at the beginning, I told you to turn on the um, editing history. And one thing I showed you was the it shows you uh, the history of the drawing uh, in selection information when you've selected it. Now, the advantage for the drafting palette is in model space. Now, if I go to a uh, wireframe in a model space. If I make additions to this, so I will do, I'll just stick a hole in it somewhere. I'll just put a hole through there and take that away. Main object, bit away. So I've put a hole in the object. And if I go back to my paper space, you can see it's updated it. Okay. Now you have to have the, uh, create editing history part tree for that in the drafting palette to update otherwise it won't update it you'll do if you put the hole in the model space here when you go to the paper space it won't be there but as long as you've got the editing history the part tree on then everything's fine okay a great little tool very very good tool very useful and that's it